Hey there, you chicken nuggets. Welcome to today's video. It's called Kiki's Quick Tips or something. I have a wealth of knowledge to share and you can tell that by looking at me, I'm sure. My wealth of knowledge has to do with touching people's faces, when to do it, when not to do it. If you're on the train and you see someone's face, don't touch it, that's not the time. If you're an aspiring makeup artist and you're on a job or you're practicing and someone has asked you to touch their face, bingo, that's the time. Given the amount of years I have spent touching people's face when it was I was supposed to, <laughs> I thought I would share some of the things that I've learned to other people who are aspiring to touch faces in a professional way where they get paid and it's a good experience for everyone. So welcome to Kiki's quick tips for how to touch a face if you want to do that as your job. This is going to be a very quick video. I'm going to share literally one thing and my tip for you aspiring makeup artists, aspiring face touchers is people will sit down in your chair. They will put their trust in you while they lie, while they lie to you straight to your face. What I mean by that is people will sit down in your chair and they will say I would like a natural makeup and then they will show you a photo of Kim Kardashian they will say oh I really want a smoky eye when they've never worn eyeshadow before they will lie to your face and they won't know they're doing it you need to get more information than just the words coming out of their mouth because most of the time the words will be lies and I do mean this is specific to when you're doing like event makeup or makeup for people who don't necessarily get the makeup done all the time. If you're working on a TV show or a movie, which I'll also make videos with tips about that, that's a different situation because first of all, the person that you're putting the makeup on is not ultimately who's deciding how the makeup is gonna look. It's gonna be the director or designer or it's gonna be different people. But if you're doing makeup for someone that's getting married or they're in a bridal party or any sort of situation where they are deciding how they look. You need to find out what their actual preference is for makeup and what their actual comfort level with makeup is, and then you can calibrate your decisions from there. So a few different ways that I do this, I ask them to come in for like a consultation or a trial with their makeup already done, so I can see what they do. If that's not possible, or in addition to that, sometimes I'll just ask them to bring photos of times that they really liked their makeup, or photos of how they do their makeup in their daily life. So when they sit down and they say, I want a natural makeup like this, and they show you Kim Kardashian, and then you look at their photos and see that they've only ever worn mascara and tinted moisturizer, you can take that into account. <laughs> because if you do Kim Kardashian's makeup on them, they will smile and leave and cry and then leave you a bad review. <laughs> on the other side of that, if they sit down in your chair and they're like, oh yeah, just do whatever, I love makeup, like it's fine, whatever you wanna do is great. Some people really like to appear chill. <laughs> Be wary of that. And then you do a natural makeup, maybe one that the person with tinted moisturizer or mascara would have really loved, and then you see their photos and see that they do full contouring, full coverage, foundation, concealer, the whole thing, they're gonna not be pleased with their makeup. Get a sense of what things they do. If you notice like, oh, in all these photos, they have eyeliner on the top and bottom. Like, I'm not into eyeliner on the top and bottom for a lot of types of looks, but if you, if you notice that, then you can maybe tweak it in a way that looks a little more professional. So for example, if I notice somebody maybe doesn't have a lot of experience with makeup, but in middle school they learned <laughs> to put eyeliner on the top and the bottom all the way. And, not, and I'm gonna talk about like tight lining when you're doing a smoky eye. I just mean like eyeliner on the top and then some eyeliner on the bottom, just like circling their eye. If I see something like that, then I know, okay, if I don't put anything down here, she's probably gonna feel really weird and not like herself. Same thing with like brows is a big tell. Like if somebody has their brows always done or their brows never done, oh, brows affect the face so much that people that are not used to getting their makeup done get really thrown off. Like if they always do their brows and then you don't do very much, they will freak out. And if you like really fill them in a lot, if they've never done that before, they're like, oh, okay, thank you. Ah. Anyway, if I, if I see that type of eyeliner situation, I might go, okay, if I leave this bald, then they're gonna feel really weird. 
So I might do a little more of a deep shadow underneath there, just so it's like softened and then it can fit into like an overall eyeshadow structure I'm doing without just being an outline and they don't feel like part of their eye is missing. The moral of the story is don't listen to people, don't trust anyone, <laughs> and get information from multiple, sur multiple sources besides their mouth. And you will thank me when you get good reviews instead of people being like, just, I, and, and so often people will leave and be like, great, thanks, and not say anything to you because they're scared. Get some photos of when they like their makeup, of how they do their makeup in everyday life. Ask some questions, you know, ask them, what do you like to wear? And more often than not, they'll be like, oh, I don't know, I just do like whatever. And you're like, great, thank you, that's very helpful. That's why photos are nice. <laughs> and that's the end of my tip. If you want more tips like this, um, let me know in the comments if you have a good helpful tip from either the perspective of getting your makeup done or from doing makeup. That's helpful to know. If you liked this video, you can like this video in a literal way that will help trick the algorithm into caring that's my understanding of YouTube. And you can subscribe to this channel. And you can also follow me on TikTok, where I'm posting things on the regular. That's the end of my talking now. I will see you another time. Goodbye.